my clock says four o'clock, so if uh, okay. we'll start our meeting with the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. I pledge allegiance pledge to the flag of the United States of America, of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, and one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Beginning our meeting, we need a motion to approve the minutes from our May 26th meeting. I assume there are no changes. Oh, go, ahead. Yeah. go ahead, Tom. I was, okay. I was just going to say, yeah, I, I assume I, no changes from the draft. In which case, I would second the motion. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All right. Financial reports. Joe? Uh, well, for May, <clears throat> as we expected, our revenues are down significantly, uh, mostly due to industrial load being off due to the pandemic, as we know. Uh, our Average net rate base is down about a third of what it was a year ago. Um, our cash reserve uh, increased, and of course we remember that we had the uh, bond anticipation note funding come in, and that was three million twenty-nine thousand and ten dollars. So our cash. Uh, reserve went up by that amount due to that that borrowing <clears throat> which occurred in May and that money is uh, reserved for the raw, raw water design intake project uh, design and engineering um, typically uh, we had some other bond uh, principal and interest payments go out about 1.17 million that uh, reduces our cash pretty dramatically at that point as well. And then we do have our listing of accounts. Um, I won't go through those in detail. Uh, as far as billing, you can see from 2019 to 2020, we actually had a higher residential billing. And, you know, again, we believe this is due to more people being home, more water usage in the homes. Mm -hmm. That was up. Uh, but then uh, our uh, wholesale customers, Falls, and the village of Kohler uh, were. Well, Falls was, was per, pretty flat. The Village of Kohler was down about $7,000 for the month. Um, and then as we uh, go further into the report, you'll see our monthly billing is, is down significantly, and that reflects that industrial load as well being down. Is French running at all? Uh, yeah, NEMAC. Jerry were was NEMAC, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they were down significantly, but they started to, to uh, increase production in May, and we could see that pretty directly. Okay, good. Joe, I would assume that the consumables for water processing is are, are down accordingly. Are there any other savings opportunities that we should know about? Well, the challenge is so much of our expenses are fixed. You know, we have fixed labor, fixed uh, overhead. We've got a fixed operating plant with, you know, a little bit of difference for electrical, chemical uh, consumption. So, you know, that's where when we're producing less water, I, I guess you could say our efficiency is going down as well. You know, that same plant could have produced twice the amount of water without, with hardly much more cost at all. Mm -hmm. So 
So I'm afraid I, I can't really indicate an, an easy cost savings when we're producing less water. <clears throat> you know, some facilities, uh, when it goes to an extreme, could, could perhaps shut down, but we're not really able to do that either. So we just kind of have to take our, our blow as it, uh, as it was coming in, in that way. No, I, I didn't see anything that appeared obvious to me. I don't know your business as well as you do, but I just had to ask the question. Yeah, we have been kind of ta tasking ourselves for that, and, and the immediate item, items were capital items. So we've cut or delayed a, a, a range of capital items. I think that's all I would report on the financials myself. Well, in that case, I would make a move that we accept the financials as they're presented. I second it. Moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 And chair votes aye. All right, Joe, on to the superintendent's report. Well, we'll start with the operations. <clears throat> and for May, you know, on the same theme, we were down, we produced about 26% less water than we did a year ago in, in May. Um, so that's, that's bad, but it, it could have been, could have been worse. Um, we are now seeing uh, more significant demands uh, uh, for the month of uh, early, early weeks of June. Um, You know, otherwise in the plant, I think the story is just much lower production. Our average day to date for the year is 10.48 million gallons instead of 12.31, which would have been last year. So again, about 25% is, is kind of what we're seeing or saw during May. Um, otherwise, uh, I think looking at the, the detailed info and updates, uh, we did have basin cleaning in, in May completed. Um, that's when we uh, have a company that comes in and removes sludge from our two not, uh, manual basins and they press out the moisture and, and truck out the dry material, relatively dry material. So that was conducted. Um, we did keep the East Basin out of service because we discovered some cracks. The East Basin is a large double-decker basin that was built in 1959. Um, it stands all exposed. It's uh, not much buried in the ground. And we've been aware of cracks and, and such over the years, but we uh, observed more cracking and we wanted to get uh, uh, R.A. Smith, a company that does a lot of work with concrete rehab into the basin and take a look and uh, so that East Basin was actually out of service for the whole month of May um, as we've been inspecting it in more detail. Uh, otherwise, you know, a lot of ongoing maintenance um, I don't think I would add any more details uh, than that in operations, unless there are questions there. None from me. No, nope, I'm good. When will we find out about um, that, that East Basin? Well, actually, I believe Friday they took some cores, so they cored samples of concrete, <clears throat> and they're going to review those and really kind of give us like a plan of action, Jerry. Okay, okay. And I think it'll be, you know, the Cadillac and the, uh, all the way down to, I, I don't know what's the cheap car nowadays, something really cheap. <laughs> okay. I guess for distribution then, um, we did replace, the crew replaced three street valves and, and uh, uh, two of those were on hydrants, so we replaced two hydrants as well. Um, 
We had one main break on Gateway Drive, Tower Drive. It's a fairly new area, but there's just a, there's an area of corrosive soil out there that contributes. You know, that main was probably put in in the, I'm trying to think, in the 1980s, so it isn't very old, but we did have, have a main break there. And, you know, otherwise the crew uh, was doing some concrete uh, restoration on, on past main breaks. Um, we did replace some bad water main in Kansas Avenue. That was just about 40 feet worth. Uh, we started up our auto flushers and hydrants out in the system to start those on dead ends uh, to get that process automated. Um, our new property on North 36th Street up the hill from Brantmire, um, we, we built a driveway in and cleared some brush there, and we're going to be using that to store some, some uh, backfill materials and uh, maybe some pipe and other things as we go forward. We, we kind of snaked the driveway in, so it's, our storage area will be a little bit hidden from the road. But we're starting to utilize that site a little bit. Um, and then you might have noticed on Taylor Hill, the crew did some pretty significant tree trimming and, and kind of opened up that area. So you actually can see the Taylor Hill Reservoir a little bit easier from the roads out there. I think that's my summary of distribution, unless there's questions there. So what are, we, what are we going to be storing out there on 36th Street? Just um, fill material, just dirt or? Yeah, one of the primary things when, when they have a main break, they have to take that material out and, and dump it somewhere, you know, in the heat of the main break. And then later we truck it out to a landfill. Right. So it's kind of going to be the go-between for uh, spoils from main breaks mostly. Okay, okay. Well, we might also stockpile some gravel and some sand out there, which again, when, when we have a main break, if they're close to that site, they could get it from there instead of going all the way back to the plant. Okay, all right. Okay, then customer. Go ahead. Customer relations and fiscal, you'll see uh, we had a big increase in people using our Dropbox. That's because we're, the office was mostly closed. We had 511 people drop payments in May compared to last year, 271. Um, fewer total payments, you know, we, we did not disconnect and people were aware that we were not imposing late fees. So we had about 500 fewer total payments. Um, you see, we still have a lot of people not on automatic pay. We only have 16% of our customers paying automatically. Um, you know, just generally less activity, less property transfers, fewer calls during the month of May uh, that we logged. Um, no public service commission complaints. Uh, I guess also that kind of interesting graph, service tech miles driven this yeah. year compared to last year, about half the mileage. Some of that is due to just less uh, work out in the field, but also as we have more, um, as we're completing the radio meter reading system, there's just less monthly driving to be done. Um, Cross connection inspections, these are in commercial and industrial facilities. Those were suspended and, and we only had five and those are starting to pick up again now in June and we'll see more in July. Um, we only replaced six water meters. Those would have been in, in leaky or emergency situations. Um, and then uh, Facebook posts, we had uh, a lot of interest in kind of opening buildings after they've been shut down. That link got a lot of interest. And uh, just kind of our, our drinking water week and uh, recognition of the pandemic got a lot of interest. 
Uh, we did reopen the pay window on May 26th, and that's been going well. Uh, it's very safe. We, we uh, our customers and our staff are about as isolated as could be from each other uh, for safety. Uh, disconnection program is still suspended. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much the summary for May of customer relations and fiscal. All right. Well, I would move that we accept the superintendent's report as presented. I'll second that. I've been moved, moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Moving on, item number four, lead service. Anything going on with that, Joe? Well, our financial assistance program and overall replacement program is still under review at the PSC. And we've been told it should go to a hearing in mid-June, which is which is now. Uh, yep. I think they uh, meet on Thursday, and their agenda comes out on Wednesday. So we're hoping it is on their agenda on Wednesday. Um, you know, again, that's uh, authorizing the utility to have a loan program, six-year loans at no interest. Uh, for lead service line replacements. And we're pressing the PSC because we now have uh, the Geely Avenue project starting up and we uh, really need them to approve that program before we start into the, the project for obvious reasons that we, we, when we had started that project, we thought we were still going to be using municipal assessments to pay for the laterals and then you'll recall the PSC said, we don't want you to continue that if you're also offering utility grants. Um, so we had to move to the loans with, with grants. Uh, but when we first advised the customers early on, you, you know, we thought it was gonna be different. So I would expect our customers to be a, a little confused when we finally have all this settle out on Geely Avenue and. I wouldn't blame them because we've had to switch direction. Um, at the end of the day, the costs that they'll see shouldn't really be very different. They'll be seeing a, a $2,500 grant, uh, non, not having to be repaid. And the remainder of the costs for their, their lateral replacement will be under that six year no interest loans. So we're just, uh, waiting for the PSC to approve that. Once they approve that, then the Public Works Committee is holding a proposed ordinance change that would bring ordinance into sync with the the PSC program involving the loans and a few other details so that everything is in sync with our program ordinance and what PSC has approved. So if all goes well and according to plan, we, we hope to have all that done by the end of June. And then we're thinking we might see invoices on the project, possibly early August, uh, hopefully not any earlier than that. Okay. All right, raw water improvements intake project? Um, not a lot new to report there, but we have, uh, uh survey of the site was was completed today in fact and we're focusing a little more on shoreline protection issues and and what that's going to look like um in the raw water project along with our existing shoreline because we we have suffered a lot of damage this past year um this area is behind the plant where there were multi-ton boulders that have been moved um, and, and we're looking to rehab some of that in the shorter term. Um, but otherwise, we continue to refine some of the details, pump selections, gen set selections, uh, 
uh, they've refined it down now to where the, the optimum uh, backup generator configuration came out to be uh, two natural gas generators uh, rather than one huge diesel or natural gas gen set. Um, and some details like that are being further resolved. We do have a call uh, tomorrow, or, uh, yeah, tomorrow with the Public Service Commission to kind of update them on the project. And uh, we're really trying to keep them along with us so that when we come in for construction authorization that they're not surprised by anything they see. We want them to be fully aware of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and so that they can be supportive of it. Um, so I think we're aiming for preliminary engineering to be done by August, and I believe we're on track for that uh, to take place. Do you sense any risk, Joe, from the the economic slowdown with the virus? I've been reading things that it might be 10 years before the economy rebounds to where it was in January. Do you think there's any risk from the Public Service Commission of saying, yeah, maybe you should hold off on the project? I've not got, it, got any sense of that yet, Mark. Uh, it, it could develop, you know, if they feel that our finances are, are not strong enough to support the project. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the the need for the project is, is pretty overwhelming. So I, I feel like um, they, they may well raise those issues and want to be sure of our financial strength. But at the end of the day, I think we're gonna see a lot of support. And you know the reason for that is because our, our intake system currently is, uh, major parts of it are, are well over 100 years old and, and really in need of replacement. So I think, I think that's going to be recognized um, even if there is a significant economic impact. And uh, on the flip side of that, we might see some cost advantages that maybe we wouldn't have seen before um, if, if there's less work out there for contractors who are still you know, up and running and want, wanting to do the work. Yeah, I agree. The infrastructure is old and we need reliable infrastructure. Any further questions on that? No. No. All right. Well, moving on to number five on the agenda. 5.1, request approval of a change in order on Maryland's 11th Street Water Main Project, Maryland Avenue. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so what happened here, uh, this is actually a public works project where uh, they're redoing streets and, and some sewers in the area of Rockline and in preparation of some other redevelopment. And this was slated to begin in March, April. And at that point in time, Rockline was, you know, in a major, major production mode, emergency mode, and uh, they have only a single service coming into their facility from our water mains, which are very old and in that area, I would say delicate. So we were concerned that with this project starting up and, and the vibrations inherent in, in the street work that uh, we did not want to see Rockline have a sudden loss of water as they're producing disinfectants. So we in Public Works uh, Department had, had discussions with them and ultimately there, it was decided to delay the project for a time being. And, and now the project is uh, ready to start up again. Uh, in order to reduce vulnerability to rock line, though, we had requested a proposal, a change order from Vinton, the contractor, to essentially run a temporary water service to them uh, in, a, in a shallow berry kind of situation. <clears throat> so that when we start on the water main project, the old main, if it breaks, cracks, it, it won't matter because they'll have a, a six inch 
plastic temporary service buried about two feet deep. Um, you know, Rockline was, was very, very concerned about loss of water and also quality of water. Sometimes when the old mains are, are disrupted, they can release sediment and, you know, they're understandably very concerned about an event. Uh, even now, they remain super busy in production. So anyway, we ended up with this change order. Um, we reviewed it. We had some various negotiations with Zinton and we felt that it would reduce risk significantly, uh, however, at a price. Um, we had some discussions with Rockline and we, we came to a, a, an agreement that they would be willing to share a third of the cost, you know, of essentially a project that's kind of being pushed onto them and I, I felt, given the situation, that for the utility also to have something go wrong affecting their service was, was not a position we would want to be in. Mm -hmm. so al although it is additional cost to the utility, I, I feel like the value is, is, is worth the cost. So the proposed... Not only for the water utility, but the whole city. Exactly. And beyond. Yes. So the proposed change order is sixty-two thousand dollars. A third of that, you know, twenty thousand uh, three hundred or whatever, would be borne by Rockline, and and the water utility would bear the remainder of additional costs. And Rockline's okay with that. Yeah, they were very happy to to work up a, a solution like this with us. Okay. Good. Are we talking capital dollars, Joe? Uh, we are, yes. Okay. We have the, the bandwidth and the capital budget for that? Uh, we do because we've delayed other much more significant projects. Okay. Those are my questions. Okay. Do you need a motion on that, Joe? Yes. So moved. Second. I second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion carried. 5.2, approval of for proposal purchase replacement actuator. Uh, high lift number five discharge line has a, an actuator that opens uh, <clears throat> the discharge valve. We, we have mostly, most of our valves now have actuators on them so that an operator isn't down there cranking uh, the valves open any, any longer. This uh, actuator is 13 years old. Um, when we looked at it, the rehab uh, work was going to exceed 50% of an, a replacement unit. And when it actually came in, it was a new actuator is 4895 and to, re to rehab the old one was something like $4,000. So <laughs> that's our situation there. I would move that we accept the, propo the proposal. I think that's a good use of our money. Is there a second? I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 And chair votes aye. All right. 5.3, approval to restrict funds for potential health insurance laser liability. Uh, last month, we had the, the health insurance renewals, which we do every year at June 1st. And the renewal this year, well, last year they had one so-called laser that's where they put a special deductible on an individual uh, instead of our stop loss deductible. Um, so that laser deductible is always higher and takes the place of the stop loss deductible, which is $60,000. Uh, so this year we had 
two lasers. And Lisa and I both felt that uh, we, we certainly had not budgeted for that. Uh, and it's kind of hard to budget for, for lasers that may or may not happen and may or may not be imposed by the stop loss carrier. But we felt because there are two this year, um, totaling $380,000 that we should restrict uh, a certain am bad amount of operating cash just to hold in reserve uh, to offset that risk. Um, I think Lisa felt that it, that was a good thing to do just to restrict those monies just so that we could not possibly uh, have a surprise there. I mean, clearly we have our cash reserve is much, much larger than that, but we, we would both recommend restricting that amount for that purpose um, for the coming calendar or uh, health insurance year. I think from a financial standpoint, um, given my profession, I think it definitely makes a lot of sense to restrict those funds, have them set aside so that if we do end up um, with a problem that uh, uh, we've got that money to to uh, take care of it. Any further questions on that? Not for I me. I don't no. have any. No. All right. Well, I will make a motion to restrict those. Uh, approve that motion to restrict those funds. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Next, we've got our insur commercial insurance program package. <laughs> yeah, so to keep things uh, interesting, our commercial insurance renews on July 1st and uh, goes for a full year. Um, for the past three years, we've had coverage through the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, which offers uh, a plan for municipal entities. Um, we've been happy with their coverage. We haven't had a lot of issues. <clears throat> and the package here that we're talking about is general liability, public officials, errors and omissions liability, auto, liability and damage, property, crime, uh, and those are the key elements, along with some cyber uh, security insurances in there as well. Um, when we began with the LEAD program, within three or four months afterwards, they did do a new appraisal, a very detailed appraisal of our property value, and it went up to close to $64 million. Uh, and, and then our premium did go up subsequently to offset that, that new appraisal. Uh, this renewal, we have a proposal from the league plan, which I, I did email separately because they're kind of lengthy documents. <clears throat> and we do have a proposal from, well, through Hub International and, and their local uh, reps, uh, and, and the insurance vendor is Selective Insurance, which we had worked with before we had the league program. So we do have a long history with Selective uh, and now some history with the league. And we did uh, provide a, a line by line uh, breakdown of the coverage elements. And as far as Lisa and I can determine, <clears throat> the coverages are comparable. Uh, they're, they're both covering the, the same things within, you know, again, the, the level of detail that we can surmise. Um, they're both reputable providers. Um, 
the proposal from the league came in at a total premium of $78,273. Uh, and the total premium from Selective came in at $71,405. So the Selective uh, premium was a little less than $8,000 less costly this time. I think in the prior two years, we did not have a proposal from them because they weren't able to be competitive and something changed in the marketplace. I, I don't know what changed, but I think the league uh, costs went up somewhat and the, and the selective costs went down so that they were able to be competitive again. Um, so that's my summary. Lisa and I have reviewed both proposals. We did not see any errors or, or issues. And I think it comes down to a, a cost difference. I think if we weren't familiar with Selective, we might have a little more uncertainty, but they covered us for numerous years in the past and, and we're, we're perfectly a uh, good carrier. So I, I don't really have anything negative to say about either carrier. I think they've both been very good. Any questions from the commission? I mean, Just for understanding, the, um, your recommendation is then to go with Selective's proposal. That's correct. Okay. Tom, I think I interrupted you. I'm good. I have no problems. Okay. Well, my apologies. Is that a motion? <laughs> is no that a motion? <laughs> I'll make the motion that we accept select the Selective bid. And I will second that. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 And sure votes aye. Moving on, 5.5, .5, uh, approval of the RO transmitting the PSC annual report to council. I'm sure you all read it word for word. <laughs> I looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> I would think it's interesting to see how much really, really old water main we have. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. It's a pretty, pretty good. What was that, Jerry? I was just going to say it's it's pretty um, pretty interesting when you start looking through some of the stuff that's in that report. A lot of details. <laughs> exactly. So I would Joe, uh, you were... go ahead, Jerry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> I was just going to make a motion that we approve transmitting the RO to the council. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Sure, votes aye. All right, Joe, you still with us? I am. All right. Any PSC code changes? Uh, none. Okay. And uh, as far as approving vouchers? We have a motion Please. to approve the vouchers? Uh, we already signed for those, correct? We signed for uh, April. April? Oh, okay. Have we seen May then yet? Uh, May should be in the in the at the end of the financial report, Mark. In the financials, okay. And then again, I'll I think I emailed those the details to you separately. We didn't want to post all that information publicly. Okay. It was right at the end of the operations report, right? Yes.
financial financial statements. Especially here. the end of the financial reports, yeah. not operations. Yeah. So the we have this sheet, this the cover sheet. But we don't have the detail. We don't have the details. Yeah. Yeah, that I I emailed to you. Uh, I think on Friday. Okay. All right. So we did see that on Friday. That was what we. Okay. And I had no questions from when I reviewed that last week. I think that was right around the same time that the RO for the PSC annual report came out. Right. Yes, yeah, so I, I would uh, make a motion that we approve the vouchers as presented. And a second. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 And chair votes aye. All right, moving on. Personnel. Any plans for regarding COVID risk reduction, Joe? I, I think our plan is pretty well in place. Um, we're going to stay open to uh, with the pay window. Um, probably uh, in about one to two weeks, we're going to start doing large meter changes in, in industrial settings. Uh, we feel that's going to be a, a good uh, place to start picking up our work activity um, before we're starting to go into residential uh, settings. Uh, so we've got that work to catch up on. Um, on the Geely Avenue project, our plumbing contractor will have to enter those homes multiple times to do the lead service line replacement and install the, the meter setting and all of that. And we'll be requiring them to be masked and, and take the basic precautions that we all know about. Um, and otherwise, we're just staying with our plan. We have plenty of uh, safety equipment for staff. We're encouraging its use. We're, we're requiring face coverings in the workplace and for vendors coming in. And we're, we're going to continue to do those things and, and try to keep everybody safe. Do we have shields besides masks, Joe? We do have uh, shields. The, we ordered, uh, I think, about 20 of those. And, and the supervisors have those for any staff that might want to wear those and and our thought was when we do start going into homes maybe they would add that mm -hmm. as one more layer you know we so we have them available if staff wants them uh yes and we now have um, disposable masks as well okay all right next on the agenda is our next meeting which will take place on uh, the third Monday of uh, July. That'd be the 20th. According to my calendar, it's the 20th, yes. Any problems with July 20th, gentlemen? No, I'm, not. I'm good. Joe, I was just wondering, what does your crystal ball say about getting back to normal in the office? Well, my crystal ball is a little foggy, Mark. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> I'm trying to rub it off here and there, but I'd rather err on the side of safety. I, and, you know, I agree with that completely. Even as far as these meetings being virtual, I, I agree with that completely. So I, I think... You guys are gonna you know, the summer, our office staff is pretty able to work remotely uh, in, a, in an effective way. So, for example, our accountant, Lisa, you know, and our supervisors in the office and myself, I think, you know, I'm in about now two days a week. Uh, our accountant, maybe one day a week. The engineering staff is maybe two days, three days. So we're we're kind of handling it like that and I, I I feel comfortable like that for maybe the next one to two months. 
unless something changes. Right. Mm -hmm. Does the city have a plan on uh, as far as you know their meetings and things like that? All I'm really aware of is their face covering policy, which they've put out now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, city hall is open. I think they've put up some barriers and things like that, but I'm, I'm not too much aware of any other steps that they're taking. Okay. Well, I guess uh, time will tell. In the meantime, we've got a date set and we'll go from there. Yes, indeed. Great. All right. Any other business? Uh, I think we need a motion to adjourn. That's it. <laughs> <We'll move. laughs> I second that motion. Okay. All right. Chair, all in favor, say aye and get up. Aye. aye. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Chair votes aye. Gentlemen, thank you. Um, Have a good Joe, day. can you Thanks, just, sir. can I just give you a call? Or can you give me a call back in a few minutes? Sure. Hey, just give me a call on my cell. I have something outside of commission uh, stuff that I want to ask you. Just a question. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right. Bye, Thank you, guys. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.